Hello, I'm Richard Watson, and this is Long Lay the Easy Way. Here's a question for you. What makes a good speaker in a foreign language? How do we judge if someone's a good speaker? Is it the number of words they know? Is it if they can conjugate verbs accurately? Or is it something else? Often, we're put on the wrong trail because of the way we learn languages at school. One thing to remember, school is not about helping you to learn a language very well. It's about giving you metrics so they can tell you at the end of the school year if you're a good student or not. You can break away from that. You don't need to use those metrics to decide if you're a good speaker. Think of it more in terms of how well can I communicate? How well can I do what I want to do with my language? It's not really a question of if you're making mistakes. Now, I know that mistakes are one of the favorite things that French people talk about when we talk about language and English. It doesn't have to be the case. Anybody in New Zealand, anybody in America or England or Australia or anywhere else in the world where they speak English, honestly, they don't care if you make mistakes. What do they care about? They care about if you can communicate. And especially... They care about if you can put enough of your personality into what you're saying that they can recognize authenticity. Authenticity is kind of the new gold or the new oil, as they say nowadays. We see it everywhere we look on internet. You can't be authentic if you're constantly thinking of grammar rules, thinking of are you using your verbs correctly, etc., etc. You can't do that. You have to be trying to communicate. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. I've got a student, a fantastic student that I had for many years. He's basically a friend of mine now, and he'll know who he is. Um, he was the president of a big company, and he had classes for 10 years with me. And he made mistakes when he spoke English. The same ones, probably, at the end of his classes as at the beginning. But he was fantastic at his job. And he could put on his president's hat whenever he needed it and start functioning perfectly in English. And some of my other students were like, yeah, but why does he still make mistakes? And I said, that's because he's not thinking about grammar. He's not thinking about which word he should choose. He's just doing his job in English. And he could negotiate with lawyers and he could plan marketing campaigns and strategies in English. He could do things in English that I couldn't do. And that's because he was not thinking about what he looked like. He was just thinking about doing what he wanted in that particular moment. Another student makes some mistakes. He's always said that he doesn't really like grammar. But he's kind of like a cross between a pit bull and a bulldozer. And when he gets moving, you can't stop him. Um, and I think as a teacher, maybe my job there was to just tell him he's fine and just trust yourself, Luke, kind of things. The force is with you. People don't do this. People often worry about the wrong things. They worry if they're pronouncing a word right, how bad the accent sounds. They worry if other people are going to judge them for their mistakes instead of judging them for their ideas and what they're saying. And that's the biggest difference. When you speak French, you're not thinking of grammar. You're not thinking of tenses. You're just thinking of what you want to say. And if you're not doing that in English, then you could arguably say that you're a bad speaker because you're doing the wrong things as you're speaking. So forget about the mistakes. Forget about what people think of you. Try and express yourself. It's more fun. It's uh, what language is made for. So what does make a good speaker apart from that? Because you can have people who express themselves full-heartedly and are authentic who are better than others. Well... It's about knowing things well enough that you don't have to stop and think about them. If there's a millisecond of hesitation on every word, that accumulates over the, a sentence or a paragraph or as you're speaking, and eventually you hit some kind of a barrier. So there's a, again, it comes back to familiarity. When you hear a word in your own language, you have an instant idea. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to go and look for it. You don't have to think about it. It hits you. It just registers. You can get that in a foreign language. You can get that by hearing a word 
or using a word enough. Now, how do you use a word well? Say it. Repeat sentences. Don't feel bad about repeating things out loud. Now, for many years, I told my students that when you have a sentence that you want to learn or a structure you want to learn, don't just read it. Say it with your voice. And I always used to tell my students, I don't know why, but it, it's much better and it's a much better practice to actually say it. And eventually, a couple of years ago, one of my students said, well, I know why, because I, that's my speciality. And she told me that when you speak the words, when you say them, you can hear them. You're making your muscles move. You're, a lot of parts of your brain are being involved in the production of the speaking and not just reading it silently. And so it's much easier to memorize. That's enough for today. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.